Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So the topic of this presentation is going to focus on the hazards associated with basaltic eruptions and this is going to correspond to section 6.6 .6 of your textbook. So on the slide here you can see we have pictures of three of the possible hazards associated with the eruption of mafic lavas. So obviously the first risk is from the lava flows which are released by the volcano. Now we know that these basaltic lava flows are quite low viscosity and they're very very hot so they can flow quite large distances which means there is a good chance that if you live close to a uh, basaltic uh, volcano of some variety you do run the risk of having your property destroyed by a lava flow. Now at the other end of the scale though the lava flows themselves don't often move that quickly and so in terms of risk to your person so your you know your, your personal risk you tend to on the whole be okay because you can get out of the way of the lava flow before it really offers any kind of danger to you so lava flows are more a risk to property rather than a personal danger now volcanic ash associated with basaltic eruptions is a very very minor component because the basaltic lavas these mafic lavas don't have a particularly high volatile content and so this makes the eruptions far less explosive so far less violent and so this is going to help to reduce the amount of ash produced during a mafic eruption and so when it comes to volcanic ash typically the largest amounts of volcanic ash will often occur where you have a basaltic volcano situated near a source of water like a lake or a glacier so what this will do is the heat from the um, the heat from the volcano will melt the glacial ice for instance this will allow the water to percolate down into the rock uh, where it can interact with the lava essentially helping to increase the volatile content of the lava and thereby causing explosive volcanic eruptions this situation however is on the whole relatively rare so most basaltic volcanoes will not produce large amounts of ash so typically it's not a major issue however given the right conditions uh, these basaltic volcanoes can produce large amounts of ash and they can have uh, profound effects on the surrounding area so obviously you know they can damage property people can suffer asthma attacks due to them and in some cases the production of ash can actually be uh, so extensive that it can go into the atmosphere and it can actually make it difficult for planes to fly uh, along that path so they'll have to divert and take a different route now in terms of lava fountains lava fountains are very dangerous if you stand right next to them so obviously a lava fountain is quite an easy hazard to spot and so you know most people will want to naturally keep away from lava fountains so on the whole as a hazard they're relatively low risk because most people will not want to go anywhere near them Now, there are two major risks which are associated with basaltic eruptions. Now, the first one is the situation we discussed a couple of seconds ago when we were looking at a volcano which has a glacier on top. Now, shield volcanoes especially will often form quite large topographic highs if they become big enough. And if you combine this with a cold climate, so let's say somewhere like Iceland, you have the possibility of building up extensive glaciers directly on top of your volcano and obviously when your volcano begins to erupt it's going to produce large amounts of heat and this is going to melt the glacial ice so it's going to produce quite large amounts of water and this water is going to pool at the base of the glacier and it's just going to sit there until eventually the walls of this glacial lake fail and this is going to allow the water to exit the glacial lake in one very large very powerful event and these events are called jokelklaps. Uh, it's an Icelandic word, and it essentially means a huge flood produced by the melting of glacial ice by a volcano. So the other risk from a basaltic eruption is due to the gases.
So obviously we know that although basaltic lavas tend to have a lower volatile content, they do still have uh, volatiles associated with them. So if you happen to walk into an area where you have volcanic gases being given off uh, by a volcano, you are obviously at risk of you know either you know suffocating or having some kind of asthma attack. So at a personal level, you know walking into an environment, so walking on to the slopes of an active um, basaltic volcano does carry a risk from the gases that that volcano will release. At the other end of the scale, we can go back to these flood basalt eruptions. Now, in the case of these flood basalt eruptions, they are going to put huge quantities of gases into the atmosphere. And so this can lead to effects such as global warming, when large amounts of carbon dioxide get put into the atmosphere, and it can have other effects such as the degradation of the ozone layer. So if you have a very large eruption, uh, the uh, gases given off by the volcanoes will typically contain very, very small quantities of elements such as chlorine and fluorine. Now, normally these wouldn't have a very significant effect. However, on the scale of a large flood basalt eruption, like let's say the Siberian traps, that is going to equate to huge quantities of chlorine and fluorine being pumped into the atmosphere. And these two elements will go into the high atmosphere where they will react with ozone and destroy it, essentially leading to a weakening of the ozone layer, which is obviously going to have a, an effect on, the life, of, on life on the surface of the earth. So when it comes to gas releases from basaltic eruptions, they can have an effect on both the local and the global scale, depending on the size of the eruption. Okay, thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.